Martinez, and I want to welcome you to my kitchen. Today we're making chiles rellenos, poblano stuffed with picadillo in a tomato cheese sauce, then onto a velvety, creamy Mexican flan. Daisy Cooks is brought to you by... As Daisy says, eat great, feel great, look great. Marshalls, brand names for less. All clad metal crafters. All clad is bonded construction. All clad is innovative design. All clad is professional equipment. All clad is a state of mind. Brillo with Oxy Action. For tough messes, Oxy micro bubbles lift and dissolve grease and grime. Brillo, cleaning solutions for your home for over 90 years. Diageo, as Daisy says, eat great, feel great, look great. And if you drink, drink responsibly. Diageo, celebrating life every day, responsibly. Hola! We're making Mexican food today. You know, in the past maybe 10 or 15 years, this country has seen a wave of Mexican influence. We're going to do a recipe called chiles rellenos, which are stuffed peppers. They're delicious, they're exciting, and they're easy and fun to make. But first, I'm gonna make achote oil. And achote seeds really are not that difficult to find. They're called anato in Italian, and I really don't think that you'll have a problem finding them in your grocer. And to the achote seeds, I'm going to add a little olive oil and I'm putting it at medium heat because you don't want to heat olive oil too high or too fast because the oil breaks down. It has a low smoke point. If you overheat this, the oil turns green, which you don't want. The seeds turn black, which you don't want. The whole thing tastes and smells like a mess and you have to get rid of the whole thing and start from scratch. Okay, and we're getting a little twinkle, just starting. So let me go ahead and lower the heat a little bit so that we can monitor how fast. I love what achote oil does to food. It gives it not only a beautiful, gorgeous, rich color, but it adds this lovely, lovely nuance of flavor. And I'm going to go ahead and strain this right into my frying pan. So now we're gonna make Mexican sofrito. You'll hear me talk about how sofrito is something that you find in all Latin American countries. Even Spain has its form of sofrito. I have an onion here. To that onion, I'm going to add a handful of garlic. And I have some tomatoes. Only gonna add one tomato, actually. And this is personal preference. My mom, when she taught me to make sofrito, would say to me, don't add too much tomato because it makes a sofrito sour. So I'm making Mexican sofrito a la daisy. Let me give this a whir so we can get this going. Okay, and then I'm going to add Cuban L peppers, and I'm gonna add two of the peppers. Again, in Mexico they may add poblanos or another chili of choice. That's cool. I'm confident that you guys are going to try sofrito and like it so much that you're gonna start making your own additions and you'll come up with a fabulous new sofrito. Okay, my red pepper. When I was a little girl, my Uncle Hector, my Uncle Hector is my mother's youngest brother. I remember going to the theaters to watch Spanish movies and there would be these Mexican movies with Mexican cowboys on horses with these beautiful big you know, sombreros and the whole mariachi thing and it was so cool. And on Saturday mornings, my uncle would play these fabulous Mexican rancheras and just sing at the top of his lungs. I could hear him from downstairs. That memory has never, ever, ever left me. Okay, relax. Not habanero peppers. These are ajicito dulce, and they look a lot like habaneros. In some Mexican households, they might put a hot pepper, a serrano or jalapeno, to give their sofrito a little bit of bite. I'm gonna go easy on you guys. These are sweet. They have a little bit of bite, but there's no heat in these peppers. If you can't find ajicitos, you could add a little more cilantro. And speaking of cilantro, I'm gonna add some of that too. And then I'm gonna pull out the big guns. We're gonna add a little Mexico to the sofrito. One of the things I love about Mexican food is that it's not shy food, it's bold. I like food like that. I like food that says, hey, I'm here, guess what? Okay? 
Let's take a walk over to my epazote plant. The Mexican kitchen loves to use an herb. It's called epazote. It grows wild and it's very, very hearty. It's wonderful. It's fragrant and it's got a little note of mint. Okay, and just a handful of leaves. And I'm gonna rinse them off. And give them a little pat dry. Oh, I just love the smell of this. And when you try it, you're gonna say, wow, that is like so fresh tasting. Epazote is wonderful. Okay, so we're gonna add our handful of leaves to our sofrito. And here we go. You gotta love it. Okay, now what we're going to do is bring our pan with achote oil over to the stove and let's give it some heat. So to this, we're going to add our sofrito. I have a little bit of alcaparrado here. Alcaparrado is that olive salad with capers and pimentos. If you can find alcaparrado, make sure that the olives are pitted because if you bite into one of these olives with pits, you know, you could break a tooth or hurt yourself. There we go, just right in there. And this, you, you see me picking up a little bit of the brine. It's wonderful. It just adds an, another little note to the whole flavor. Let's work that around. Ooh, you know what? I can smell the difference in the sofrito from the epazote. I just think it's so pretty. Okay, we're just gonna cook the water out of that sofrito for a second. I'm gonna add some tomato paste and work that into the sofrito. I want no big tomato paste lumps. Just work the whole thing in. Okay, I'm gonna add some salt. I'm gonna add some pepper. Okay, and my, my ground pork. I'm just gonna blast the heat a little bit. I want the pork to pick up the sofrito. And just break up the meat with the back of my spoon. Just work the sofrito in. Okay, we're just gonna make sure that the pork is cooked through. Come on, tell me that doesn't look gorgeous. It smells incredible. That's some seriously good picadillo. Our picadillo is done, so let's move it over here and we can cool it. And let's pay some attention to our poblano peppers. Put the heat up here and I'm just going to blister them. We're just gonna soften them up a little bit so that we can stuff them. Poblano chilies are not hot. They're mild chilies, they're sweet chilies. I find that regular green bell peppers have a, a, a sour back note to them. I don't find that with poblanos at all. And they're just softening up nicely. Okay, let me just lower the heat here for a second so I can keep an eye on these babies. And I'm gonna come over here and make some batter. I have an egg. and a beer. I'm going to use three quarters of a cup. Let me just whisk this around a little bit. Using beer in a batter, I find, makes a nice, light, very foamy type batter. And you can use whatever beer you have in your refrigerator. I'm gonna add a quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder, a cup of flour. And when you make beer batter, it's usually a good idea to let it sit a little while. I'm gonna add pinch of salt. The yeast in the beer just lightens the whole batter up. You see little bubbles come up in a second. Okay, I'm gonna leave that there and get back to my peppers, which are doing just lovely. My grandmother, her stuffed peppers were incredible. She was famous for them. But I love finding, you know, a recipe like this that is familiar yet different. Okay, and this one is nice and soft. Let's put him over there. I think these are cool enough that we can start paying some attention to them. Let's see, I'm just gonna take my knife and scrape away the loose skin. And if you have, you know, a couple of little black patches, don't punish yourself, don't beat yourself up. It's really not a big deal. I'm going to make a little slit on the side of the pepper and I'm gonna take the seeds and the ribs out. I'm gonna show you how to do this. I'm just gonna make a little slit down the center of the pepper open her up and we're gonna take the inside out. That big knob of seeds up on top, just cut it out with the ribs. Okay, and so I'm gonna keep this stem because this is gonna help me when we fry it. But inside, 
It's nice and clean. Now I'm going to stuff and fry our peppers. So we have this little pocket that we've made. Let's, we put the meat in there. There are different spots at which you can start this recipe beforehand. You could blister your peppers and then leave them on the side and have those ready. You could stuff them and have them ready. You could even go ahead and fry them and have them ready because we're going to finish these peppers in the oven. So you have a nice packed little pepper here. And I have canola oil, which has a very, very high heat point. I'm going to take my pepper and I'm going to dip it in my batter. Remember I told you this little stem was going to come in handy? Just drain it a second and into the oil it goes. And that's a nice happy bubble. That's going to happen fairly fast. These look so pretty when they come out. They're actually almost good enough to eat just like that. My neighborhood is a pretty small neighborhood in Brooklyn. Latinos started coming in by way of Puerto Rico. And now there's this huge Mexican community, Mexican and from Central America. And when you come out of mass in my church on Sundays, there's these little Mexican women who set up stands selling tamales and they have a vendor with churros. But every Sunday, rain, snow, winter, summer, they're always out there. When we come out of mass, we buy our tamales. Okay, this is what I'm looking for. You see how pretty that is? That color is just gorgeous, beautiful golden brown. And the little sister pepper is right here. Okay, so now that the peppers are done, I'm gonna take some Spanish style tomato sauce and a little chicken broth, real simple. I'm gonna add a little chili powder. I'll just, I want it to be nice and thin. A little salt. Okay, and I want to add a little bit of that beautiful minty epazote. And that's really gonna brighten the sauce right up. You have a little smoke from the chiles. Okay, and that, that epazote is just gonna bring it right up. I'm gonna go ahead and place my peppers in the broth. Okay, so now they're in the sauce. I'm gonna set them aside. We're gonna bake them later. But in the meantime, I want to show you a quick, fun, really easy way to make a delicious Mexican flan. Wait till you guys get a whole load of this. Flan is a very traditional Spanish dessert with a melted caramel topping. Delicious. I went to a little Mexican restaurant that had been recommended, and when I tasted this flan, I was like, oh my gosh, this is unbelievable. It was creamier than the uh, texture of traditional flan, and it had a little sour cream thing. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. So I called the host over and I said, this is the most incredible flan I've ever had. What is it that you do? And the guy says to me, well, <laughs> we, uh, you know, we gently boil the cream. Uh, no, 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 that, that's not it. There's something about the flavor. Yes, well, we put cinnamon sticks in it. I was like, is the guy who made the flan here, can I speak? You know, well, he's very, very busy. So what did I do? I hit the church ladies and I said, you know, I had this Mexican flan and the girl started laughing. She goes, no, it's not sour cream. It's not cream cheese. What it is, is this stuff they call crema. And I'm gonna show you all about crema in a second. Let's make some caramelo. What do you say? I'm gonna add a couple of tablespoons of water to start my caramel off. We're gonna give it some heat, medium. You don't wanna burn your sugar because then you have like a real bitter taste if you burn the sugar, you don't want that. Okay, so we'll work that in, get it started. So then the race was on to find this crema fresca, which is really amazing stuff, but I got it. I served the flan at a dinner party and people were like, whoa, this doesn't taste like regular flan. I actually should call it church lady flan, right? So the thing with caramel is you don't want to like kill it with heat because if it heats up too fast, as I said, the sugar turns bitter. So you just want to be a little patient with it. You want to get some pretty color on it. So now that the, the sugar and the water are pretty much worked together, now I'm going to take my brush and we'll be wiping down the sides of my pan with a little water. You have the sugar crystals forming on the side, big clumps, and you really want to work 
to keep it nice and syrupy. You don't want any clumps of sugar in there. You have beautiful, gorgeous syrup, which is what we're looking for. You just got a little bit of amber going on now, if you can see that. And it's best not to do this in a dark bottom pan for exactly that reason, so you can gauge the color of the caramel. We're close now. And you can see now that the foam is dying down. So the, the caramel is like telling me it's done. And the color really is where I want it to be. Okay, I'm going over here. I have a little pie plate all set up. And what I'm going to do, I do not want to burn myself. Grab some pot holders and just run your caramelo around your pie plate. And it gets hard fairly quickly. So just try to get a nice even coat. And then we're going to leave that there. It's going to harden and it's going to be beautiful for our flan. Okay, evaporated milk, right? No problem. One can. Sweetened condensed milk. I could eat this stuff right out of the can. It's so good. And now I have three whole eggs. One. Two, three, and three yolks. And you could save the whites for an omelet tomorrow morning. Okie doke. A tablespoon of vanilla. God, I love the way vanilla smells. And here comes the secret ingredient. This is the media crema. And you can get it pretty much anywhere. There's this, always an ethnic aisle in the supermarket. So this is it. This is the stuff. It's got a nice little pop top. And you can see it's like it's a little curdly, almost like sour cream, but just a little looser. Oh, it's just wonderful. You see, it's a little curdly, but that's going to mix right in. You want to make sure that it mixes well so there's no you know, little lumps in there. Take a peek. You guys are gonna love this. This is really amazing. Okay, we're gonna take a walk. And I have my little pan here. And I'm going to just go ahead and pour my flan mixture right into the pie plate. We're gonna set this in a bain-marie hot water bath. What I'm going to do is take the tray over to the oven and then put my hot water in so I don't have to carry a tray with hot water to the oven. There we go, and I have my hot water here ready, and we're gonna pour it halfway up. Terrific. Tuck in my tray. My oven is at 350. I'm gonna start checking my flan about 35 minutes. Just give the tray a little jiggle to see if it's set up nicely. You know your oven best. Let's take a peek at that flan. Okay, I got a nice little jiggle there. Let's take this out. And, whew, that's hot. While the flan is cooling, I'm gonna come over here and make some white rice. I don't like to toot my own horn, but I make perfect white rice. And I'm teaching you how to do it now too. There's no excuses, okay? A couple of tablespoons of canola oil, and I have my white rice, and I prefer to use long grain rice when I make rice like this. Okay, and I want to coat my rice with the oil and a little salt. And I'm adding nice high heat. I want the rice to get like a little chalky. Let's see, let's give this a little turn. Yep. You see the kernels look chalky a little bit? That's my rice telling me I'm ready for the liquid. And here's the secret, pay close attention. I am adding enough fluid to the rice so that the fluid level lies two fingers, two fingers above the level of the rice. We're going to bring that to a boil. As soon as it comes to a boil, we'll wait till the level of the liquid meets the level of the rice. You're just leaving this rice alone until then. Okay, the level of the fluid has now met the level of the rice. This is what we're going to do, watch. Once. Cover, lower the heat, and walk away. I'll be back to look at that rice in 20 minutes. 
But first, I'm gonna pay a little attention to my peppers. Remember my peppers have been sitting in this lovely sauce? I'm just gonna turn them over to coat them with the sauce. The batter soaks up the pretty tomato sauce. Look at that, isn't that fabulous? Okay, and now I'm going to sprinkle this with some Jack. If you have a favorite cheese, other than that, by all means. Okay, I'm gonna take these over to the oven. Okay, so in the time that it takes my chilies to bake, 20 minutes, my rice will be ready, my flan is cooling, and we'll be ready for our Mexican fiesta. So I put my flan in the fridge to chill a little bit, and very, very pretty. Just set that over here. What do you guys think? Wait, it gets a lot better. My knife around the edge of my pie plate. Ooh, and the caramel is just very, very pretty. Okay. Now I have a nice big platter here. Ready? One, two, three. What do you think? Is that beautiful? Okay, and I think, looking good. And let's go see about those peppers. Ah. Can you say gorgeous? Look at this, the cheese is like just starting to brown up on top and the sauce is all bubbly. A little rice first. What did I tell you? Did I not tell you it was perfect and fluffy and loose? Absolutely beautiful. And I'm going to go ahead and serve myself some of this gorgeous, fluffy, delicious rice. And I'm going to go ahead and serve myself one of these gorgeous babies right here. Mmm. Oh, look at this. Oh, and the sauce is all cheesy and beautiful. <gasps> Oh my goodness, I have a little chopped cilantro just to perk the whole thing up. And I'm just going to cut into the chile. It smells so good. Mmm. Wow. Amazing. You have all the delicious flavors of the pica de yolk, the cilantro, the onion, the garlic, the tomato paste, and then the cheese on top, delicious. And then I'm gonna come over here. I'm going to cut myself a little wedge, and I'm just gonna scoop up some caramel up here. Take a little piece. Okay. Mm. Wow. Wow. Call the police because somebody's going to jail. That is criminal. That's how good it is. It's absolutely criminal. Okay, you need to get yourself some chiles. You need to make some white rice. And you need to throw all of these things in a blender and make a fabulous Mexican flan. Have your own Mexican fiesta in your house. Buen provecho.